Hello and welcome to a short overview tutorial, if you will, of Zen Edit, a great software application for both Mac and PC that's designed to work with the Zendrum Z4. In fact, all Zendrum Z4s, brand new ones, will now ship with a copy of Zen Edit. If you already own a Zendrum Z4 or if you're thinking about doing an, uh, an upgrade to the Z4 specifications, I strongly encourage you to pick up a copy of Zen Edit. For years, we've been used to working with the Zendrums and controlling the setups and the parameters with a little four switch momentary device in the back of the device and a three digit screen that you know kind of had coded messages that told us what we were working on. But a lot of the settings were global in nature. In other words, you'd set the parameter for all of the buttons. With Zen Edit, you can dial in to each individual trigger and fine tune every one of the parameters a lot more easily with a lot better results than with the Zendrum by itself. So we're going to take a look at how to work with the Zen Edit and the Zendrum Z4 and really dial in a perfect setup for each and every one of you when you're playing your Zendrum. Now before we start, if you already own a Zendrum, this is important. Make a backup of what you have. And that's pretty simple. You can use something like uh, System Exclusive or even Zenit itself. But what you're going to do is you're going to create a MIDI backup. So you're going to do a System Exclusive MIDI dump from the Zendrum into the computer so that you have a safety, basically a backup, of your device the way it sets today. Uh, directions for all of that are included in your Zendrum manual. It's, pr it's pretty simple to do. So moving forward from that, we need to configure our Zendrum to work with Zen Edit. Now the way that I suggest doing that, and this is my method, is you do a factory reinstall, so you're back to brand new settings on your Zendrum. And you set that down to C Pentatonic, which is the first preset, user one. Then you're also going to set up user one in Zen Edit. And we're doing this for a specific reason. We want to, to basically calibrate and identify the exact locations of the buttons. One of the cool things that happened with the introduction of the Z4 was the ability to put triggers wherever you wanted. Uh, in fact, this one is one of the prototypes for the Z4, and obviously I have a completely different layout than most people. And it was important that I know that when I'm playing on this particular pad right here, I'm triggering the correct response and the correct trigger that I see lighting up in Zen Edit. So it's a real quick, simple procedure to get this thing set up. Here's how we do it. So at this point, we'll move into the computer and do an overview of all the different features and functions within Zen Edit. Okay, so this is my Zendrum layout. I've already gone ahead and configured everything. It looks exactly like my Zendrum Z4. Go ahead and start at the top. We have the new project button, save and load buttons. We have print preview, which actually generates a text list of exactly all the settings that you're putting together in Zen Edit. Very cool little feature to have. You have receive and transmit system exclusives. This is the MIDI dumps that you can go back and forth from your Zendrum. So once you set up a, a setup in your Zen Edit that you want to try, you can transmit that into your Zendrum and go ahead and give it a shot. Try it. We also have the MIDI chase button. I leave that enabled so that way when I trigger a specific note on my Zendrum, it plays the same note in here will then light up. MIDI in. This is a drop down window. Depending on how many interfaces you have set up in with your computer at the time, you'll have those selections popping up right here. In my case, I have just the one Yamaha 01V96i. This button here, the fact that it's green, tells me that the MIDI connection is in fact valid and working. I can also click on that and disconnect it if I choose to, but bottom line, green means go, we're in, we're in good shape. And then you have a small little help button here also. Now moving down to the bottom section, there's basically two windows and only a few parameters you have to really work with. As I said, I'm working on setup number 16. I can get to different setups by clicking on this drop down menu. I 
I can also go to the reorder setups and grab them and just move them around, change the order of which they're all put in place. I can also use the arrows to do that. I can also rename them at this point by just double clicking on it and typing it in and hitting enter. Very nice way to just sort of set your uh, user setups in the order that you want to work with. In my case, I only ever use the one user setup. Uh, 16 is where I've always used it. I do everything else inside the software. But here's how you'd set up all your orders of your user setups. We also have the channel mappings. In my case, I'm only using channel 10 for the drums. We also have crossfade points, which I'll get to in one second. Now to work with a trigger or a group of triggers, all you gotta do is if it's, you wanna work on one at a time, you just click on the one you wanna dial in, or you can click and drag, a bunch will then light up. And now you can make adjustments to the entire set of the triggers that are all lit up. So we'll go back to the one. First item is basic settings. This tells me the note number and the MIDI channel that I'm using. And there's also this little times four, which is actually the to toggle crossfade on or off. When you have crossfade enabled, a little red dot appears on the trigger. And now you have the four zones. Crossfade, basically, as you go from soft to loud velocities, they filter through the different zones. Now, on a regular Zendrum, when you enable crossfades, you're set with the actual note numbers being in a line. So 48 would then be 49, 50, etc. With Zen Edit, that gets rid of all that. You can actually dial in exactly what note you want and make jumps. So this is the only way to actually free yourself up from a sequential line and be able to truly pick the articulation you want. In my case, on the Tom-like pads, I have the same note for the, the first three and then the final section is basically a rim shot. Back over here to crossfade points. With Zen Edit, these are all adjustable. So in my case, this red section is the loud velocities, and you'll notice it's set to come in at 122. I use that, and the maximum volume here is set to 125. This is my maximum MIDI velocity. The Zendrum will not generate anything over 125. The reason this is an important setup for me, and an important setup that I recommend to everybody, is especially with modules and some software programs, you run, over, you run into this phenomenon called machine gunning, where the velocities all just kind of sound exactly the same, kind of like a machine gun. By just dropping it down to 125, nine times out of 10, you can put the headroom back into the sample pool because you're not going completely to the uh, loudest point on the sample selection. You're just coming down just a very little bit and now you've got that headroom to be able to cycle through some different tones at the top and this most of the time this will alleviate the machine gunning effect. So now we move into response calibration. We have minimum and maximum. These are the amount of force on the pad itself that will generate a MIDI note or a MIDI event. So for instance minimum of four. On a tone wood like a maple, uh, the, the wood is designed to vibrate and it does a very nice job and it's very efficient at it. So you might have to have this setting up a little bit higher depending on your trigger layout versus something like a zebra wood where the, the, the wood itself is a lot more dense. Again, you'll set the minimum amount of force required. Where this gets handy is, say I'm playing on this pad here, which is my hi-hat. And when I play it loud or hard, I start hearing a little bit of the bass drum creep in, which is on this pad. All I need to do then is the minimum force. I can just slowly start raising that one at a time, independent of the other one, until that cross talk goes away. That's how you'd work with the minimum. And maximum, I always want the full force of my playing to generate a, 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 a MIDI event. Uh, bringing this down, you run the risk of hitting it so hard that you don't generate something because you actually went over it. Now, the bottom box here is your seven velocity curves. And again, selecting one pad or a group of pads, you can dial in the velocity curve you want to work with. Now, a lot of you know that I work with a foot pedals, 
in different combinations. So for instance, in this jack here, I'll use a foot activated trigger pedal that gets to the loud velocities very quickly when plugged into a Zendrum. So I've got it set to this velocity curve so I still maintain a quieter section all the way through the bottom here and then it ramps up only at the very end. You'll also notice that the minimum velocity is set at 12 because someone walking by on the floor might just set the trigger off. Again, this is just applied to this trigger now and all the rest of them are different. This allows me to marry up what my fingers do and what my feet do in a nice, seamless, smooth response. Then you have the advanced tab, which basically just tells you, again, what is happening per trigger. So in this case, it's set to a MIDI note event. I can change the MIDI message to be a control change, a channel pressure, pitch bench, and program change per individual trigger pad or input device. And then the last tab is a display tab, at which point if I wanted to change the color of the trigger, I could do that. I can also enable melodic mode and show note numbers. But overall, that's it. Four basic tabs and a little master section over here. Okay, so there you go. Working with Zen Edit is actually very simple. There's not that many moving parts. The benefit to doing so is being able to just dial in every single trigger to exactly the way you play. So I encourage you to check it out and thank you for watching.